Hi, this is Sean, W9SLN, and you're watching the Ham Radio 2.0 video podcast available on livefromthehamshack.tv and YouTube. Ham Radio 2.0, episode 126, from the Cowtown Ham Fest. Mark, KD5RXT, gives us a forum about how to set up DMR, a DMR network, for devices that connect to each other over an Arden mesh network with no internet. Coming up right now. Uh, good morning. I'm uh, Mark Colross, KD5RXT. And uh, first off, I want to open by telling you we appreciate you attending the uh, Cowtown Ham Fest on behalf of the Cowtown Amateur Radio Club. Uh, thanks. We appreciate your support. And throughout the day, if you need anything, find somebody with either a pink badge or a pink shirt, or maybe both, and they can certainly help you with whatever you need. Ham vest related. Yeah, there are limits on what we can do. Uh, this morning's presentation is on uh, emergency communications using DMR over the mesh network. And the key point here is with no internet required. Uh, if you operate DMR, you're, you're well aware that your data stream goes out to the internet to a centralized server and then gets redistributed from that centralized server. That's a normal mode of, of DMR. Um, the uh, purpose of this presentation is to show you how you can actually use uh, DMR in an emergency situation where you do not have internet connectivity. So we'll start out actually by uh, talking about what is uh, the, what, what is the hardware that I'm using and uh, what software am I using and then demonstrate actually DMR over internet just so you know it's working through the hardware and then remove ourselves from the internet and uh, uh, sorry, got to make a hardware adjustment here. These routers don't like to be on the table. I don't know why. Uh, and then we'll remove ourselves from the internet and we'll actually operate exclusively away from the internet. So I have two setups here, one at the front table and one in the back corner. Those are representing our disparate uh, mesh network, uh, separated by however far you can get line of sight. Okay, so the uh, topics we're gonna cover, what is a DB Mega, where do I buy one? Uh, what software do I need? What else do I need or should I get? How do I operate over the internet with it? Uh, that would just be a short demo. Uh, what is uh, broadband ham net, amateur radio emergency data network, otherwise known as the mesh network? What do I need in order to operate the mesh network, and how do I operate DMR over mesh? That's the key. And then uh, where do I get more info, and we'll have an open session for questions. So uh, what is a DV Mega? It's literally a, a board that sits on top of some processor. Now, in my case, I have the DB Mega that's made to sit on top of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's best if you use a Raspberry Pi 3, but it'll certainly work with the Raspberry Pi 2. The, you get the, the advantage of the extra horsepower on the Raspberry Pi 3 is beneficial. It plugs in on the header on the Raspberry Pi, and it is literally an RF hotspot. Uh, so you see that it has a, a vocoder on it, which uh, uh, also has codec, codec modem and, and the RF uh, um, uh, capability to support digital operations. It acts as a, uh, a DMR, D-Star, Yezu System Fusion, and also P25. I don't mention P25 because I have no P25 radio, so I, I haven't exercised that capability. Uh, and uh, it is available in several formats, as you see there. It can sit on top of an Arduino Uno. There's another version that sits on top of an Arduino Mega. And then the one that I particularly use is the uh, one that sits on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you, there's a URL there if you want to get the information that the manufacturer provides. And let me take a, high, uh, a side step for a second. Um, this presentation will be available to you electronically after the fact, and you'll see this again several times throughout the presentation. If you just email my call, kd5rxt at awrl.net, I will send you the link to my Google Drive that has all the presentations. And more importantly, there's a walkthrough document that tells you how to configure everything so you can get access to that walkthrough document. Where can I get a DV Mega? Um, right now, the primary sources are from the manufacturer themselves or uh, 
the universal source of everything, Amazon.com. You can also buy them from Gigaparts. Uh, and you can buy just the board. You can buy the board and a Raspberry Pi. You can buy a whole kit that has a Raspberry Pi, the, the case, the power supply, everything needed. Um, in my case, I had the Raspberry Pis already, so I bought just the board. The uh, single, and it comes in two, two versions, a single band or a dual band. Single band uh, uh, made for the Raspberry Pi lists for 90 euro. Actually, right now it's a little more expensive. I guess the dollar's not doing well against the euro. It's $129. And then the dual band version lists for 135 euro, and it's currently 169 from Amazon. Okay, what software do I need? Well, first off, you have to load your Raspberry Pi with the latest version of Raspbian. Uh, last one I loaded was, I think that's the wrong date, actually. Anyway, it's November of 2017. And then there's the utility. If you're a Windows person, you use uh, Win32 Win Disk Imager to actually uh, load that image onto the micro SD. Put the micro SD in your Raspberry Pi, boot up your Raspberry Pi, and you will log in as a Pi user to do everything. You've got to configure the, the operating system. The standard utility is uh, Raspi config. Run that. And then uh, you'll want to get all the operating system updates. So if you've got a Raspberry Pi that's already running and it happens to be running an older version of Raspbian, uh, this, this com uh, command string, uh, sudo apt get update, double ampersand, sudo apt get dash y dist upgrade. Uh, a lot of gobbledygook there. The first command says update whatever I, version I have to the latest pieces for that version. And then the second half says if the first half succeeded, then go ahead and do a distribution upgrade, which literally puts me to the latest and greatest as if I went and got the latest image. Um, there's a little bit of, uh, you'll see a little bit of discussion out on the internet about whether it's okay to do a dist upgrade versus just an upgrade. I prefer the dist upgrade and I've never had any trouble with it. Um, so on the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, I'm sorry, on all Raspberry Pis, you have to disable the console port usage by the operating system because the, uh, the DV Mega is going to use that same port. And then specifically on the Raspberry Pi 3, you have to disable Bluetooth because it interferes with that same port. Okay. And again, this, this is the high overview. Uh, the the walkthrough document gives you the, the detailed step by step. So you're going to create a place for MMDVM. Okay, what is MMDVM? It's the software that's actually doing all the magic. It's the interface between the operating system and the internet, and interfacing to the, the, the uh, DV Mega. MMDVM stands for Multi-Mode Digital Voice Modem, I think it was. Uh, it is the software that's actually running and allowing you to go in through the RF hotspot and stream your data to either the internet in normal case, or to our uh, mesh server that we'll get to in a little bit. So you're going to download and install MMDVM host, and there's the source URL. Build that software, configure it so that it runs automatically whenever you start up the Raspberry Pi, and then we're going to go grab IRC DDB gateway because it plays nicely with MMDVM to give us this ca these capabilities. Okay, uh, the important thing for this capability um, anything with a square bracket around it is a header in the INI file. And so you're going to look for that header and you're going to change the entry under it as indicated there. So we are going to enable DMR network operations. And for the initial demo where we're actually on the internet, we're going to connect to the Brandmeister server. So the, the address we're going to use is central.brandmeister.us. We're going to use their default port, 62031. And we're going to use their password that Brandmeister provides. That's P-A-S-S-W-0-R-D. And then we're going to allow slot 1 or slot 2, and that's, it'll, it'll use whatever your radio uh, channel is configured for. Okay, as far as the radio itself, we have to do a little bit of creation. You're, if you're familiar with the term code plug, you're going to have to make an entry in your code plug to allow you to operate on your RF hotspot. So. Basically, the six steps there, define an emergency, uh, digit emergency system, define a uh, digital contracts entry, define a digital RX group, define a zone, define a scan list, and define the channels specifically that you're going to use. My two hotspots, one's on 432.475 and one's on 432.500, so I've actually defined two channels. 
name them uh, DVmega-MJC1, my initials, and the digit 1, and in DVmega-MJC2, my initials, and the 2 is in the back of the room, and the 1 is up here on the front of the room, connected via the mesh network. So you'll have an entry in your code plug for using your RF hotspot. All right, so let's talk about the mesh for a second in case you're not familiar with it. What is mesh networking? Um, there are two groups. Uh, originally, the, uh, the, the mesh network was developed and called broadband hamnet. Actually, it had a name before that, but it's now commonly known as broadband hamnet. Uh, some guys split off and actually started uh, doing their own development, and they call their network AREDN, Arden, or Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network. Um, very, let's jump all the way to the bottom there. Uh, th basically, think of the mesh network as a Cat5. Anything you can do over a Cat5 cable, you can do over the mesh network. It's just a way of interconnecting um, pieces of equipment, whether it's a laptop or a Raspberry Pi or some other. Uh, uh, we have an a, um, IP camera out here that's actually streaming video of the ham fest. Uh, anything you can hook, hook to a Cat5 network, you can hook to the, the mesh network. Uh, the mesh, its magic is the fact that when you turn a node on, it will automatically connect itself into the mesh, and those nodes will co co cooperate and coordinate with each other to determine the most efficient route for your data stream to take. The mesh is different from the standard internet, like take your house for example. You have a centralized router and all of your devices in the house have to connect to that router and all data passes through that router no matter which of your devices are talking to each other. In the mesh network, every node is trying to connect to every other node. And so it's like a spider web of interconnectivity and the nodes themselves will take care of routing data as efficient as possible. That, that algorithm is called OLSR, uh, Optimized Link Something Routing. I forget what the something is. <laughs> Happened to be, yes. Uh, but the, uh, you see the, the fourth bullet there, self-discovering, self-configuring, self-advertising, and self-healing. That means if I'm streaming data through my mesh and I'm using a particular node and that node either disconnects, dies, you know, lo uh, loses signal, what have you, the mesh is automatically going to reroute my data stream in the next most efficient route available. And that's all sort of uh, predetermined as the nodes can uh, communicate with each other. But again, just think of it as a Cat5 cable. Okay, so what do I need in order to do uh, BBHN or Arden uh, mesh networking? I need appropriate hardware. Uh, the Linksys WRT54GL was original blue routers that uh, uh, Broadband Hamnet was first developed on. Uh, since then, uh, the Ubiquiti series uh, of router, family of routers, and they're the M2s are in the 2.4 gigahertz range, M5s are in the 5 gig, and M9s are in the 900 meg range. All of those are available for our use as hams. And then um, the software, you need the BBHN or Arden. You see down at the bottom there, it refers to the OSL firm firmware. That's built in to when you load the, uh, the router with the unique uh, uh, mesh firmware. All right, DMR over the mesh. Um, yes, sir. Okay, I'll give you the quick answer. For now, yes. There is no guarantee they will ultimately split and be incompatible. But um, the link that I provide you, actually, if you look at a presentation I gave last year, there is a way to actually connect Arden and BBHN so that it looks like one continuous network, whether they're compatible or not. So right now, they are compatible. You don't need that mechanism. But when they split and go their separate ways, there is a way to interconnect them, and it, and the, the, it will still look like a continuous mesh. So you, that'll be in the folder in the link that I provide. Okay, yes. Yes, I can. Okay, the question was, are Arden and BBHN compatible with each other? I said, you know, it started out as BBHN, and some other guys uh, kind of split off on their own with Arden. So as far as are, they, are BBHN and Arden compatible with each other, for now, yes. But there's no guarantee they won't someday split. Thanks, Jason. Okay, so I'm going to configure my Raspberry Pi DV Mega. Uh, uh, actually, it says HP Link. Um, okay, so the important ones, we already saw this. 
uh, enable DMR network and, and all the parameters. I think that's a duplicate slide. Uh, so your, uh, wait a minute, wait, 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 back up, back up, back up. Okay, I'm, I skipped a step. So right now I have my Raspberry Pis configured to uh, operate via the Brandmeister server out on the internet. So my mesh is a five gig mesh. I have a two gig router hooked into my mesh and that allows me to hook to the 2.4 gig mesh down on the floor which has internet connectivity. So I'm using their internet connectivity by uh, cross-connecting a 2.4 gig mesh router and a 5, 5 gig mesh up here in the room. So to demonstrate that, let's skip out of this right quick. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Place. So I'm going to open a browser and just for the fun of it go to yahoo.com and you see I have internet access at the moment okay so uh, we have our DV Megas uh, connected to okay so this is my uh, DV Mega dash MJC one that's the one up here all right I am running MMDVM and the way I have my, I apologize that this is probably really small in the back of the room and probably not very bright. Um, but I have my Raspberry Pi set up so that it automatically starts MMDVM. It also automatically starts two other packages which aren't being used at the moment. MMDVM is doing all the work. And you can see uh, this, this window in particular is the one that's watching MMDVM. So if I grab my radio that's on it, uh, MJC1, and I key up uh, KD5RXT testing over uh, Texas statewide 3148. You can see the data scrolling by there. And there might be somebody on that should answer us. KD5DUI, have you found here? KD5DUI, appreciate the comeback. Good morning, Mike. I hope everything's going well for you out in Colorado. Morning, Mark. Sorry I couldn't be there, but yeah, here uh, on the uh, U.S. Air Force Academy grounds overlooking the cadet area, a lovely sunny day. All righty, very good, Mike. I've, no, we're going to change over to non-internet next, so thanks for the comeback. Uh, KF5DEY, KD5RXC, clear, Texas Statewide 3148. Okay, and had I turned my other radio up, you would have heard me on my other radio because they're both on Brandmeister, so anything coming from Brandmeister for Texas Statewide 3148 will come to either of my hotspots or both of my hotspots. All right, so, so now back to the presentation. I can't see. Wrong glasses. <coughs> Okay, so that was, that was just operating over uh, the, the RF hotspot operating over Brandmeister. Nothing impressive there. That's what you buy it for. So we go to now, how, how do I uh, operate over internet? All right, so um, this line is going to change, address equals, and I'll actually open the file and show you how it's going to change. And your radio should already automatically be set up. Nothing to change in the radio. You've already got an entry in your code plug. So let's jump down here. The address is now of the server. Now this is what, what server is my hotspot going to connect to. Uh, I'm going to run the server on dvmega-mjc1 and I'm going to configure both of my hotspots to go to dvmega-mjc1. On the Raspberry Pi that's running the server, this entry will actually say localhost. And that's a convention in Linux that means I want to go to the same machine that I'm on. It's a, it's a generic name that refers to my machine. And on the distant one, I'm going to tell it to point to the server on dvmega-mjc1. So let's jump over there. Oops, wrong one. This VGA mode is a real pain in the neck. 
Okay, so on MJC1, I'm going to open a terminal. And again, I apologize, it's so small. This, this file is in uh, slash home slash pi. I happen to put it in downloads, mmdvm, and it's mmdvm.ini. I'm going to search for brand, because I know that's where the, the place is. And I'm going to comment, comment out the line that says address equals central.brandmaster.us. And I'm going to uncomment the line that says address equals, oh, another, another way to refer to localhost is 127.0.1. So I'm going to un uncomment the 127.0.0.1 line. And I'm going to go ahead and reboot this guy. Whoops. Someday I'll learn how to operate computers. So that it will restart that server on uh, pointing to itself and then go to the second hotspot, which is back in the back of the room, do the same thing. Take it off Brandmeister and tell it the server. Uh, wait a minute, which one am I on here? Da, 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 I'm on MJC2. So, I don't want this on MJC1. Reboot him. Uh, I don't actually have to reboot. I can just rerun the startup script, but reboot works as well. There's levels of drasticness. Reboot is kind of at the top of that. <laughs> Restarting the server is a little lower. Okay, so back to the presentation. Why it does not do that? Okay, so my radios again are, are already set. The code plug entries for talking to DV Mega MJC1 and DV Mega MJC2, and uh, uh, so as soon as both of those Raspberry Pis come back up. <coughs> I will actually remove my node that's giving me internet connectivity. It's going to be this guy here. Warm fuzzy check, no lights, okay. So I no longer have internet connectivity. Let's check just to make sure so I'm not fooling myself. back to here, open a fresh browser, go back to Yahoo, and no can do. Can't get to Yahoo, so my, net, my internet connectivity has gone away, which is a good thing. And by the way, because you got up so early this morning and uh, made the effort to come here, uh, we actually have a MD3, it's MD380, right? 2017. Oh, we have an MD2017 to give away to everybody who attended the presentation. So. <laughs> okay, so let's check my Raspberry Pis, make sure they're alive. There's the first one, it is running. And it says it has logged into the master successfully, and the second one... Says wrong, wrong window. It has logged into the master successfully. Okay, and again, I have no internet, so I now have my two radios, and I have to use both of them. One of them on MJC1, one of them on MJC2. So I key up KD5RXT test over. Well, it's not no longer Texas statewide 3148. It is now private network 3148. Okay, and if you could see it from here. My ID actually still shows up on the radio. I, I'm actually running TY Tools. And then likewise... Okay, somebody else in the building here is actually on one of my hotspots. So... <laughs> he's... Uh, that's Philip, KB5ASY. KB5ASY, I appreciate the comeback. And uh, everything seems to be working. We're, we're off the internet at the moment. So uh, running... Uh, eight, uh, what is it? The, uh, the server, uh, MMDVM host running on the Raspberry Pi, and the two of them are going across the mesh network. It's very difficult to talk when you hear yourself. Roger that. Audio sounding. I'll have a good presentation. KB, follow us, 
All right, thanks, Philip. KD5RXT. Okay, so, you know, recapping what we did here. I have two RF hotspots. They are each on their own mesh node. The mesh network is providing my, me my distant connectivity, effectively my long cat5. One radio is talking into one hotspot, the other radio is talking into the other hotspot uh, by way of the code plug entries that I put in. And the software that's running on one of the Raspberry Pis, I have the MJC1 as a server right now, it's running HB Link. HB Link is doing the job of the C bridge. If you want to think of HB Link as a mini C bridge, it's a very mini C bridge. Um, but it is free software and downloadable. Let me go back to the presentation. And again, it starts over. Um, okay, so uh, that HB Link is actually acting as the replacement for the Brandmeister server and doing all the routing just like uh, Brandmeister does normally for DMR. So this requires a mesh network, at least one hotspot, but you're probably going to have two because you're trying to, to uh, have people not co-located be able to communicate with each other. And then the mesh networking actually makes that connection. There is a detailed walkthrough, as I mentioned before. It is uh, uh, the, this presentation, next hour's presentation, and the detailed walkthrough are all on my Google Drive. If you will send me an email at kilo delta 5 romeo x-ray tango at awrl.net, I will be happy to send you that link. And there will be also um, links to last year's presentations where it talks about cross-connecting uh, BBHN, Arden, uh, and also uh, uh, different frequency ranges like we did here to get our internet connectivity. So with that, what questions do we have? I went through this pretty fast. I, I'm running on Mountain Dew this morning, so. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, different cap uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, the question was, what's the difference between a DV Mega and a DV Mini? DV Mini, I believe, was an earlier version. I don't, I'm not familiar with it because I don't have one. I only have DV Megas. But that brings up a good point. Let me, let me say a couple things. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Jason can answer that. Okay. Okay, so the DV Mini is USB and it plugs into your laptop and does not require a Raspberry Pi. So it takes care of everything through the laptop. Um, and you bring up a good point. There are multiple pieces of hardware that are all supported by MMDVM. Uh, OpenSpot is another popular one. Uh, Blue DD is one of the later ones. All of those should be able to do this ex exact same job. I just happen to own the DV Mega and put it on top of a Raspberry Pi. Um, second thing, uh, Mike, KF5DEY, he's not here to defend himself. He and I have this ongoing discussion. <laughs> I like to download the software, build the software myself, configure the software myself. That's a very difficult way to do things, okay? There are images available that have everything already set for you, and all you do is go to a, a web page to control everything, turn things on and off on the web page. Mike uh, just sent me an email yesterday. He's out of town, but he sent me an email yesterday telling me that PyStar does this job very, very well. So if, you've tried, if you haven't tried the PyStar image, uh, that's probably one that's worth playing with if you don't like getting in and editing things at the command line. Um, I happen to be a software guy and I'm used to the command line, so it's no problem for me, but I recognize that that's not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, so there are images that, that uh, uh, make that job much, much easier. Uh, so there's multiple ways to do this. I'm just presenting one way, one particular way. Other questions? Wow, nobody's awake. You need more coffee. Yes, sir, back in the back. Yeah, so um, I'm not real familiar with the hotspots, but are you limited to the number of uh, handhelds that can communicate through? Okay, so you're not familiar with the hotspot. Um, the question is, what, uh, is there a limit to the number of handhelds that can communicate through the hotspot? Just think of it as a repeater, a very, very low power repeater. So one person at a time can talk through it. Uh, but other than that, no, there's not a limit to the number of people who could be in your network. As long as they have the appropriate configuration in their code plug, in their radio, accessing your hotspot, it would be just like them accessing a repeater. That, that answer your question? Yeah, so, then I'm assuming that if you're operating over a microwave mesh network, you're going to have some radios that are being used to not have to have a DMR ID. 
Um, no, everything is still done, all the routing is still done by DMR IDs. So everybody would have to have a DMR ID associated with, uh, you know, and, and, and configured in their radio. Uh, I'm sorry, let me repeat the question. If, uh, because everything's on a private network, would each user still have to have a DMR ID? And I believe the answer to that is yes, uh, because that is how all the data is routed via, via DMR ID. Um, could you assign your own DMR ID to multiple radios? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Somebody else answer that question for me. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. Okay. Right. See, and it, this gives me the opportunity to say something I should have said up front. I'm not an expert in anything. <laughs> I, I, I like to play with this stuff. And, and so I, I'm glad you asked the question, and I'm glad there are people who, who actually know the official answer. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Closed network. So, so you, the answer is yes. You could, uh, uh, could put the, your, your DMR ID in multiple radios on the private network. Go ahead, Mike. This has been Ham Radio 2.0, a YouTube production by KC5HWB. Visit our website at www.livefromthehamshack.tv. Please also stop by our Facebook page at fb.me slash hamradio2. Be sure and subscribe here on YouTube to keep up with all the new videos that are posted nearly every Monday. 73s everyone and thanks for watching.